This is Caps PA announcer Wes Johnson, and you're listening to Book the Pod! Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of What the Puck. It is a Washington Capitals podcast, which means it's a podcast about your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Thank you all for listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. Well, here we go. The regular season is upon us. We are three games into the regular season, and I got to say, the Caps, they're looking pretty good. They're looking slick in those three games. I am am surprisingly happy about that. Joining me, as always, to talk all about it, Coach Dan. What's going on, man? How you doing? Like he said, I'm surprisingly happy about You know what? (laughs) I am not. I think that we should have lost these games so that we could have better turnaround and make for a better story going forward that's true because like what are we going to say on this podcast like uh hey you know they they really could be three and oh right now if it was like centimeters difference in the second game that's true but you know what i'll take it i mean it's it's been a good start to the season you've got you know came out and they beat the rangers five to one just dominated them ovechkin he scored in what every game so far i don't know i think did he he every game did I he get the? I, I don't. I, I no. I think if he would have gotten that goal, it would be every game. But it got. I mean, either way, back. he's off to a great start. Kuznetsov's off to a good start. Vanacek and Samsonov are playing well. Uh, Hendricks Lapierre got his first goal in the NHL. That was awesome. I mean, they've had a fantastic start to the season. Uh, you know, these first three games were not easy. The Rangers. I don't know if they're going to be as good as they were potentially supposed to be last season and what they might be projected to be this season. They made some interesting moves in the offseason trying to get bigger and, and meaner. Um, I think we all know why. Willie Bailey. And, yeah. and then the you know defending two-time cup champs came in, and then the, the Colorado Avalanche that are a cup favorite right now. And at least with the Rangers and Colorado, they just knocked them to the side. Like, they, for long portions of those games, dominated the play – not necessarily possession, but they dominated the play. And then the two time defending Kelp champs. And you've got people out there talking about the caps where they're not going to be able to, you know, to hang with the big boys anymore about how they're older and slower and whatever else the case may be. They hung with them. And like you said, if it wasn't for, you know, a couple inches one way or another, they, they could be three and right now. So I think this is a great start to the season for the team. And, you know, now that we have a high expectations from what we've seen, they have to keep it up. Now, Going a little off topic here, I, I kind of want to jump into this since both of you are TV guy, both you and I are TV guys here. Uh, we've been able to actually experience all three networks that are airing the games in these three games. It started off with TNT, then we got to have NBC Sports Washington, we got to hear our Joe B and Locker, and then we got to experience ESPN Plus on uh, on Tuesday night up against the Avalanche. What do you think of these new setups? Uh, is there anything you liked or disliked about? the broadcasting or the graphics or anything like that with these new networks now involved. I can see the positives and negatives to both, right? So for people that don't have an ESPN plus or uh, Hulu uh, subscription membership, whatever it is, they are getting screwed out of being able to watch some of these games that normally were on a local broadcast, right? Because normally, if they're not on the local broadcast, it's because they're being nationally televised. And while these are nationally televised, they're nationally televised to a specific audience. And that is, to an extent, not... Well, it's definitely not what we're used to in the U.S., but it's also just kind of... I don't know. It's just not cool that fans are going to miss games because they're not paying you know exorbitant amount of money for, for a subscription to a streaming service. But as someone who has that streaming service, I do enjoy it because... I can, you know, any time and any night, for the most part, I can go on and watch a game. You know, whether it's a Caps game or some other game, I'm able to watch teams that I don't normally see. And honestly, when I'm putting my son down to bed, he likes for me to, to lie in bed with him for a few minutes and we just kind of hang out and used to, like, look at pictures and things of him when he was little. Well, he's, you know, two, so he's not exactly huge now. But, like, <laughs> when he was smaller. But then now I'll go and I'll put on ESPN Plus or Hulu and I'll, we'll watch a few minutes of a hockey game, just a random game. He's a big Anaheim Ducks fan. First time we That's did... the set is quite the choice. So 
first game, uh, first time we did this where I started, I was like, let's watch a hockey game. And so I put on a game. It was Anaheim against, um, oh, shoot. Vegas? I don't know. I have to look at their schedule to see who it was. It doesn't matter. Because I said that's the Ducks, I'm sure it was an animal. And he was like, I like them. So now every time <laughs> we turn it on or he sees me boot, you know, boot up the ESPN Plus or Hulu, he goes, Ducks, Daddy. I want to watch the Ducks. So he's a Caps fan, though. He he likes watching hockey. Um, he likes the Caps. I was trying to teach him some of the players' names. He's got some of them uh, yeah. in, in terms of the ability to say them. But, you know, it it – Having ESPN Plus, I'm able to watch these games, which is really nice. But I can understand why some people who don't have it are feeling a little neglected, or a little bit of a it's a little bit of a rip off in terms of not being able to watch their games anymore. Now, I could have this completely wrong, but my understanding is that in Europe, you know, you have to ha- you have to subscribe to certain packages or TV or streaming services, whatever the case may be, to watch European football, which is the biggest sport over there. You know, so it's not unprecedented around the world for this kind of thing, but it is pretty unprecedented in the U.S. for one of the four major sports that you're unable to watch a game because it's on a streaming service that you don't have. So it's a little weird. I also found it weird that on Hulu, I was like three minutes behind, even though it said I was live, but I switched over to ESPN Plus and I was right on, like, more or less on track. So that was strange. I don't know what's going on there, considering it's the same parent company. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I'll say this about like TNT. I like that they put the the penalty clock on the ice. I thought that was a nice little touch. I thought, did you? I liked that. I did I'm not, not critiquing like, you. I thought it was weird though. I liked it because you know you're constantly like looking up to the left hand corner to see how much time is left, and you see it now right on the ice. I didn't like ESPN's graphics where they had the like the the nameplate above the player's head see that's the thing i did not notice that which game are you talking about i didn't see much of the tampa game no no so tampa was nbc sports washington it was joe b it was joe b locker felt like a warm blanket because it was just like so nice (laughs) to be like oh those are those are my boys you know and we are very spoiled with the the broadcasters we have with the capitals i didn't like so mid-game with action going on, TNT shrunk the game down and put a border around it because they wanted to have the great one, Wayne Gretzky, in mm-hmm. the corner of the screen, mm-hmm. which I understand that he is the great one. I don't want to take anything away from Wayne Gretzky. However, if there's live action going on, I don't need to see Wayne Gretzky vamping in the corner while things are happening because Hendricks LaPierre got his first goal during a Gretzky vamp where he's just kind of like hey you know i had breakfast this morning hockey you know he, he's barely even talking about what's happening on the screen it's talking about like his record and ovechkin and stuff like that this, save that for intermission when when live hockey is happening i don't need to hear gretzky give me his life story i i i, I was a little ticked off that i didn't get to hear the roar of the crowd when henrik Lapierre got his first goal now when it comes to espn plus I wasn't a big fan of the broadcast team. I also felt like it's weird that ESPN Plus, that is for diehard sports fans, treated that game like it was somebody who has never seen hockey before. Like they had the the. It was kind of like when they used to give the puck the tail in the nineties. They had <laughs> they had the nameplates like above Fox people's. Did that? Yeah, it's like they they had the, these things poking out of the the players' heads with their names on it, and then they were explaining. They're like, and there's Kuznetsov waving his arms when after he gets a goal. Like it's it's called the bird selly. We all know that, but if you're not a, a hockey fan, they don't really know that. But it, the way that they were talking about the game, it was as if the audience had never seen hockey before. So it was kind of like, all right, we're gonna dumb it down for this audience, even though ESPN's the diehard. Like I can see TNT doing that. Because you still have the ability to flip through the channel and be like, oh, this team's on. Okay. Where ESPN Plus, you are purposely clicking on that game to watch that game specifically. That's the thing with, like, TV nowadays is there's no, like, by chance you might catch something. Like, Sharknado would not be a thing, would not be a big deal if it premiered, some like, on Netflix tomorrow. Netflix or, or Sharknado became a big deal because it, it was a random Saturday night in the summer and everyone just somehow tuned into sci-fi. You know, so like to to treat the audience as if they've never seen hockey before on ESPN Plus, I thought was a weird choice. TNT, 
they were kind of like, here's the faces you know, here's Gretzky. He's going to talk about this sport that you're probably not paying attention to anyway. Who cares that this rookie just got a goal? So, I mean, it's they're both starting out with hockey. I understand, but this is this is one of my biggest concerns of them leaving NBC. It's kind of like, you know, they are now the small fish in the big pond, and they're going to have to fight for uh, for people to pay attention to where if they were NBC, they were the only game in town. They were the biggest thing they had. They were treated like a big deal. Um, but I don't know. That's, that's just my take on it. I still love uh, our team at NBC sports, Washington. Obviously I'm going to watch all the games that I can. Uh, what doesn't matter what channel it's on, but I don't know. I, I felt as if like the broadcast team, I, 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 I kind of, I kind of miss the NBC crew except for Pierre. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really mind not having Pierre on the broadcast. That was nice. That was quite that was quite refreshing. Um, I didn't mind the broadcast personnel so much. Uh, you know, I thought they were fine. Like, I mean, the one guy said he hasn't called hockey in 13 years. And I don't want to be like, ah, oh, it shows, because that's really rude. And it is, was his first game, so I'm not trying to be a jerk about that. But you could definitely, I don't know if they they didn't know hockey or if they were trying to talk to an audience that didn't watch hockey. That's that's how I felt watching it. I'm like, the stuff they're saying, I feel like the audience should know by now, but I don't know. I mean, I you know, it was fine. Uh, it's not the normal guys that we have, and so, you know, I understand that's going to be the case. And Yeah. But I felt like, you know, it's – sometimes when you get the nationally televised games, you – sometimes it's always weird because you're just used to a certain voice, especially when it's a game in the home arena. You know, it was at Capital One, and so I just think it kind of throws me a little bit. But – it, you know, I thought they were fine. I didn't think it was that big a deal. I didn't actually notice the stuff on the ESPN uh, in terms of, like, the weird things that were popping up. But maybe that's because I have a toddler and, you know, I'm, like, watching the game, but then also trying to make sure that he stops jumping on the couch. They also use the Weagle, by the way, for the uh, the scoreboard in the corner. Not the cap script. They use the Weagle. I wonder if that's because it's, it is more like a stereotypical logo in that it's not right. a script logo. Yeah. That could be part of it. I don't know. Um, you know, I feel like we see the Weagle in a lot of places that you wouldn't necessarily see a team's secondary logo. And I think that's because the primary one is a, is that Word. script. But then also I think they should just go back to the screaming Eagle and just make the retro jerseys, the normal ones now, or, or just give us that big W. That's all we need. No, you need to calm down with W. <laughs> that thing is some hot garbage. So it's, a, it's an okay third logo. If it was cooler out, I would be wearing that right now. That that third uh, W it's a sweater. It's little chilly out. It ain't that chilly. Come on. It was chillier earlier this week. It really warmed up today here in Maryland. <laughs> Still rocking the short sleeves. Uh, I mean, I am too. It was warmer in, uh, when the sun was out. It's a little, little chilly now. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, l well, let's actually talk about some hockey here. <laughs> oh, is that? Wait, hold on. Is that what we're supposed to be doing on this show? That's what we. That's what we do. We don't well, critique that's uh, broadcasts. Why we're, well, you know, I'm, no. Why? Hmm, I think that's a big part of it right now because everything's so new. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a big. De it's, well, kind of, but it's also a big deal because it's you know we just have to get used to it. It's a it's a new format. It's a new. Uh, it's new places we're getting our our hockey from, and we just have to get used to it. It is another thing I'll say, and this is just probably because I am an old man, but um, during intermissions, I would usually, if it was just on cable, I would go to like my DVR and find like a half hour sitcom or something I had recorded. I would watch that and then go back to the game. I wouldn't normally stay with the uh, the intermission crew, but with ESPN Plus, like it's a whole big thing where you got to like get out of the app and then open up something else and then you have to go back. So like I never left ESPN Plus, so it's probably smart on their part for putting that there, but. Personally, I didn't like it because I couldn't like flip around to something else I wanted to watch while people yammered on about what we just watched. Um, hmm. yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I, I mean, it didn't really bother me that much in terms of having to flip around if I wanted to. Uh, my whole thing when there's intermission is that we used to always, my wife and I would go and we would watch some show that we you know had wanted to catch up on, but you have to remember to set that timer for 15 minutes. Because we would get engrossed in some show, and then we go back to it, and there's like ten minutes left in the second period. And you're like, "What? What? Huh? Yeah. What happened?" And so it's like uh, during the um, Colorado game, I think it was it was two two or something like that. 
And then we went to go put the little man down for bed. And then suddenly I just like checked my phone real quick while she was reading a story. And it was 4 2. And I was like, what? Huh? What? We've been upstairs for a few minutes. Like, what happened? Like, you can miss a lot. So, for anyone else out there that's doing what Brandon does, what I do, where you kind of go watch something else potentially during intermission, set that timer. <laughs> it's it's, a, Im- it's, it's a important aspect yeah. when doing this. I actually was watching uh, American Crime Story, the impeachment series about the Clinton Lewinsky affair and then i looked down at the clock and i'm like oh 6 58 i gotta go see dan all right we can stop that show first <laughs> pause that <laughs> whoops so uh yeah so let's talk a little bit about these games uh i love the game against the rangers henrix lapierre definitely came out and and showed off and uh it's gonna be really hard to not have him be a part of this team when nick backstrom comes out it's gonna be very difficult uh what they're gonna do with this kid he has really shown up and shown off and again of course the captain as always alexander ovechkin came out guns a blaze and breaking a record so this really couldn't have been a better start to the season these guys are are playing really hard they're they look like a a team that can go a long way now it's only been three games there's you know, it is an 82 game season. No, nothing uh, shortened here. At least, hopefully, nothing will be taken back. Dude, 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 stop trying to jinx it. So man. I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, all 82 games happen. Um, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, this couldn't have been a better start. Well, I mean, it could have been because they could be three zero. Okay, fine. <laughs> They still got one point, I mean, which, oh, oh, all right. So, all right, we, I'm going to be so scared. Oh, oh, he's fired up. I'm going to be Here we so go. scattered. I am going to be so scattered this episode. But I think it was the World Championship or the Women's World Championship. It was some international hockey, and they were talking about overtime and shootouts and stuff. They actually have this thing where if regular regulation wins are actually three points, overtime wins are two points, and then if you go to overtime and you lose, you get one point. So it's actually more incentive to not go to overtime, which we know the Caps love to do, because it's three points. It makes it even more competitive to finish the game in regulation. I thought that was a, 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 a awesome idea, and I kind of wish that the uh, NHL would think about doing that, because three points or one point, that's a very big difference, and those losses and stuff can come back and bite you in the butt at the end of the season. Oh, it definitely can. It's kind of vaguely like soccer where you know you get 3 points for a win, 1 point for a tie and no 0 points for a loss. Right. And it it definitely makes a big difference between getting the win and a tie or in this case the win or an overtime loss in that you're not missing one you're missing two points and those are going to add up after a while. So right. I, I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily be against it. I think a win, though, is a win, and I feel like even if you, if you said if you win in overtime, you only get two points. Two points, yeah. I think you win in overtime, you should still get all three. Nah, see, I, I don't think so, because I, I think it's smart to get these guys to finish in regulation. Because there's, I mean, look at the caps. How many times have they gone to overtime in the last three seasons? But it's like you're still getting punished in a way because you did. Like, at that point, going into overtime, you, you're still almost getting punished, right? Like, maybe if you go to a shootout, you only get two points. But I feel like if you win in 65 minutes, somewhere in there, then right. you should get all three points. I, I would be for like two points for a shootout, and maybe you get no points if you lose in a shootout. But oh, that's gonna get really complicated though, if like all these different scenarios in terms of how to keep track. But yeah. I could, I could see the NHL doing that. I think it'd be interesting. I wouldn't necessarily be against that type of thing where you're, you're making it more of an incentive to end the game in regulation as someone who you know has to get up early in the morning i'm all four games ending on time yes yes me too and can we start monday night football earlier please and thursday night yes start them all at seven or six six is a little too I, i'm still on the road if i'm working by six <laughs> give me seven i still think it's crazy to an extent and it's probably the wrong word but I just can't believe that we've had this opportunity to watch this once in a generation player, someone that's going to be talked about forever in when it comes to the NHL. And he's been a part of the team that I follow quote unquote, my team. And to have him be a part of that has just been like, what are the odds? You know, I still remember coming home from college class or something. 
I think it was. And yeah, it must have been because early early to mid two thousands. I came over from right. class and I saw that the Caps had won the draft lottery, and I was just like, oh, "We're gonna draft that Russian guy <laughs> of of chicken of of something he's of and chicken." Be- He's going to be really good. Ooh, but ooh, are they going to take the other Russian guy? He's also supposed to be really good, and there's some talk about that might happen instead, you know? But to have him be a part of the team that I follow, it's just it's insane to think about. And, like, once he's retired, we're definitely going to miss not the, you know not just the goals, but just the fact that we had someone that was part of the national conversation. You know, I just I think that's something that we don't take for granted, but it's something that we're going to miss to an extent when it's not there anymore. Ovi is something special. He really is, and he's a once in a lifetime player. We are one hundred percent lucky to have him as the team captain, as the face of this franchise for how long he has been here. Uh, you have to imagine that he's ending his career with the Capitals, uh, at least his NHL career. I'm sure he goes to plays with with uh, Dynamo at the end, but he he's chasing that Gretzky record. And I, I mean, you don't bet against Alex Ovechkin, you know. And he uh, it's been a rough road for him to get his his Stanley Cup. He finally did get it, uh, but. You don't bet against him. He has his his eyes set on this Gretzky record, and there's no doubt in my mind he's going to get it. He'll figure out a way to do it. And uh, for him to break the record this early on in this season, I mean, you just kind of have to think, like, what would have happened if there wasn't a lockout or a pandemic or or anything else of what his career might have been like and how he probably could have gotten to, to these records way quicker than he already has. But mm-hmm. it, it, ju- it just seems like... You know, every other game, there's a new record this guy is breaking. He is, he is something special, and and uh, yeah, like you said, we are so lucky to have him as our as our captain and face of the franchise because we got to. I mean, if without Alex Ovechkin, we would not have experienced a cup run. We would not have experienced two winter classics. We would not have started this season on TNT. It just wouldn't have happened. I mean, the NHL knows. This guy is attention grabbing, and uh, and uh, we get a front row seat, and it's great. And we get to have number eight on our backs, and they're probably going to retire the number eight once he leaves. A hundred percent. Yeah, put it up in the rafters, no doubt in my mind. Him so and they should do it on the same night just so they can hang out again. Yeah, exactly. Well, they they both finish their careers in Dynamo in Moscow. I was say we talk about how they're just generational talents, but then I feel like every year there's like, oh, that guy's really good, right? <laughs> like there are a lot of good players in this league right now. You know? Yeah. What What have you thought about Henrik Slot Pierre and his two games? We've seen him for, terrible. We've seen him for two games. Send him seen down. Connor McMichael for one. Also terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going with the uh, the older guys. Yep, that's what we gotta do. Go with the old people. No, I. You know what? I think both have done well. I think that Lapierre exceeded expectations, not only making the team, but then also being able to play and score in a game that you know. Yeah, the Caps kind of ran away with that one, but I still think he played an exceptional game. And I think that it's gonna be really unfortunate when they send him down back to his junior league team because it's gonna, it's gonna become a numbers game. At some point, I mean, at some point, Backstrom's going to have to come back. And the question that that they're going to have to ask themselves, the question that La, La, La Violette, why can't I say his name? It's very hard to the, say. It is. It, it, it's, it's a weird one for some reason for me. The question that La Violette's going to have to answer or think about is, who's coming out for one of these kids? Because it's not Backstrom. It's not a you know it's 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 not if you're talking because they're all centers it's not Backstrom it's not Eller it's not Kuznetsov it's probably it's not going to be Dowd because right now Dowd Hathaway and Haglin are playing phenomenal together you know they're an out, they're a fantastic fourth line a lot of energy creating a lot of chaos good defensively so I definitely don't think it's going to be them so who do you take off to play one of these guys? Is it a Connor Sheary on the third line and let LaPierre 
or McMichael play on the wing. And once Backstrom comes back and that cap hit then comes back onto your books, you don't have a lot of space. So my thought is LaPierre goes back to juniors and McMichael's in and out of the lineup with somebody else. And maybe he plays his way in in, in a Sheary or maybe even like a Haglin or a Hathaway is not playing. I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I think from what they said on Caps this morning, uh, Henrik's LaPierre, he has a an end date the, for this season. So if he plays 10 games. Is it 10 or 9? It's No, if he plays 10. So his 10th game, you can play up to 9. If he plays his 10th game, then the first year of his contract kicks in. Right. Which kind of, as a human being, seems like a little bit of a ripoff. Like he's kind of getting screwed. Like, he's getting paid, but the Caps will then get him for another year if they hang on to him longer. Right. Right? Even though he played a bunch of games for the team. So it kind of feels like he's getting screwed over a little bit. I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised that they went with LaPierre for two games in a row because I feel like they're going to be juggling uh, what they're going to be doing with this kid if he only does have ten games or nine games, really. I think he's down before... mm, I might want to take that back. But I kind of feel like he sent. I was gonna say, and I was like, maybe not. I, 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 you know what? I don't know if it's ten games played or if it's ten games into the season. I think it's played. I really do. I do too. But part of me thinks is wondering if they's like, well, we'll just park them in you know the press box for half the season, and then it doesn't count. Which also terrible idea because that will definitely stunt his development. Yeah, we want to. He he's got to be on the ice. Yeah, so that's why I think they're gonna send him down. Be it when Backstrom's available or before. And then I think it's McMichael's spot because he's here, he's in Hershey, and he's clearly, after he showed last season, that Hershey is he's on a higher level than the AHL. And that having him in D.C. is beneficial because he can you know jump in and out of the lineup and kind of play his way into a regular spot, be it later this season or next season. Yeah, I thought I thought McMichael looked good against the Avalanche. He didn't light the lamp up like LaPierre did in game one. So you've already gonna like I saw that one Russian machine article about a guy who ran out of the his seat when uh LaPierre got his first goal and immediately got a jersey or a sweater with his name on the back. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh I, I haven't seen anybody. That guy's do... got money to burn. <laughs> right? Watch LaPierre change his number. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. Uh but no one's doing that for McMichael right now, but that's, I mean, McMichael's young. He didn't He's win played that. one game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's going to be hard to judge him here, but I think, I think LaPierre, they're going to kind of be sparing, sparing with him and his time until we know exactly what's going on with Nick Backstrom. So we might see more Connor McMichael down the road, but I think we're going to see LaPierre for nine games and then he's, he's out the door. Now what nine games that will be, I don't know, but I don't think they're going to have his first year kick in when they're so close to the cap limit. Mm-hmm. To, I don't think they're going to try to burn that first year of his contract um, this year. They're, they're going to wait until they, they got a little bit more money down the road. There's just no point. In, in doing that, unless you're going to play him all season, unless he's going to be playing, not necessarily night in and night out, but every other game, then there's no point in doing it. Wait till next season and when he's likely playing for you every night. Or I don't even know if that's – I have to imagine that's probably gonna, going to be the case, but they don't have like a ton of free agents after this season. I mean, you're looking at Nick Dowd, who they probably will want to bring back. Even if, I mean, he's 31. Uh, yeah, until the end of May. So for – you know, after they've won the cup, he'll turn at what 32 at some point when they're winning the cup uh, and sprung, they need to resign in the forwards uh, department. And so, you know, you don't have a ton of guys. I, I just, I don't see necessarily where McMichael or LaPierre fit into this team from a numbers standpoint in terms of just, there's only two forwards that are out of contract after this season. Now the year after that, you have Eller Haglin and Hathaway and Sherry that all need new deals. But that's too far down the line to talk about right now, at least from the, for the point of this conversation. But I think, you know, you maybe make some moves in the offseason. You try and get a little bit younger by bringing in the 19-year-old and the 20-year-old, and maybe you move out a guy like a Carl Haglin, if you can, in the last year of his deal, considering he's 33. Maybe you don't bring back Nick Dowd, and you put, I don't know, someone, Eller, McMichael, LaPierre, on that fourth line as an energy line uh, for next season. But... Right now, I think there's just not... I think it makes complete sense to 
move LaPierre back to his juniors, let him continue to develop there and light up that league so that he's ready for next year. And I think McMichael needs to be playing every night or every other night. Otherwise, you're kind of stunting his development, and maybe you send him down to Hershey to play more games. Um, but I think it's nice having these young guys around because they provide a lot of energy. And it sounds like Laviolette likes what McMichael's been doing, or was doing, I should say. Yeah, I, I like what I've seen from McMichael a lot. I, I hope the coach is really happy with what he's seen. But he's a young kid. Like he's he's The only way he's going to get better is if he gets playing time in the NHL. And I think he's a guy that can help your team this year, where LaPierre can probably help you down the road. Has it been exciting to watch LaPierre light it up uh, in his first game as a rookie? Yeah, it's been a blast. And it's so great that he was able to do it in front of a crowd uh, as well. It was great to see fans back at Capital One Arena. It's great to see fans back everywhere right now. So it's uh, that's that's sure. always been a that's lot of fun. True. Now let's talk a little bit about the the goalie situation. We saw our buddy Double V, Vitek Vanacek. He got two games. Uh, he was able to start the season as the number one guy, and then we saw Sam Sonoff up against the Avalanche. What did you think of this uh, this very short sample size we have of these guys? I think it's going to be a battle between these two the entire season. I don't think there's going to be a clear-cut number one until maybe the playoffs. I think you're right, and I think that's a perfect thing for this team in terms of they're just going to push each other to to be better, and I think that's what they need right now in terms of having two young goalies that haven't that aren't proven in this league necessarily. You know, we've seen plenty of goalies that are young and come out strong and then disappear. You know, they they whether is they can't handle the pressure, or they fold under the responsibility, but we've seen that before, and so these guys have to show the consistency in terms of playing night in and night out. Um, are playing often and playing well. And so far, both of them have, have, have had tough tests. I mean, we had Vanacek's, what, 1-0-1 one one oh one right now. But when you lose in overtime to the defending champions, you know, no one's really going to give you a hard time about it in a game that was, what, 2-1? 2-1. So, two to one. yeah. So, it, you know, I think that it's great to have both of them playing and playing on this team, and I'm excited to see – um, how the rest of the season goes. I think at some point it's going to be difficult because you're going to need to make it. A, you can't play both in the playoffs. I mean, you right. can, but not at the same time, but it would be pretty unprecedented for like every other game. You'd pick a different goalie. Uh, but what this means is that if they can continue doing this, 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 that this team has two really good goalies that they can rely on. And that's what you need. Yeah, and that's what you want. You do want two goaltenders that you can really lean on. And we saw we saw Braden Holpe uh, being backed up by like uh, Phoenix Copley and and uh, Justin Peters and those Justin Peters, right? That was his last name. Um, I think so. And you never really felt too confident if it wasn't the Holt beast in there, unless it was Philip Grubauer. <clears throat> So to have these two guys that are are kind of learning as they go, I, I think v, if it, you're asking me, VTech does have the edge over Sammy, uh, but we'll see how they how they uh, work down the road. It's only three games, but I've been very happy with the goalie situation. I've been very happy with the young guys. Martin Fethavari has looked great in the games that uh, he has played here. Nick Jensen, I thought, has looked really good. Mm -hmm. Him and Ovi have a really weird dynamic, and they seem to be working really well together. All good things, but Ovi and Jensen, for whatever reason, seems to be a very good tandem. Uh, I think John Carlson has looked really good. And Yevgeny Kuznetsov, a guy that we gave a lot of flack to, a guy that we were very unhappy with. We really did not think he was going to be in a capital sweater come this this time of year. Uh, we That's what we were thinking in probably June. But Yevgeny Kuznetsov has looked really well. He did uh, allow the, the first goal for Colorado to get kind of past him. He kind of gave up as uh, as the, the puck was going past him. And uh, the Avalanche player was just kind of able to like move Kuzi's stick out of the way. I thought that was a really bad look for him. But it actually kind of motivated him, and he was able to come away with two goals up against the Avalanche. So Kuzi seems to be back in his Kuzi form that we were really happy to see. And uh, I think everybody's really impressed. Hopefully... They can do this for 82 games. Like we said, this is an older team. We don't want them to get tired out come April or May or even into June. But to start the season, this is what you want to see. Yeah, I mean, I think that this team, uh, they've got a lot of players that are stepping up right now. I think Kuznetsov came in with a bit of a chip on his shoulder 
and had a lot of people that you know wanted to see him gone. He was heavily rumored to be, yeah, both of us. You know, he was yes. heavily rumored to be moved out in the off season, and I think he's responded with, um, you know, he's responded to he's responded to that criticism. He's responded to the adversity that he brought on himself. And I think that he's done exactly what this team needs. He, he needs to be that number one center that they have. And, uh, you know, it, it, that would have been a big problem if he did not come in playing that well. And so you know, I think that, uh, it, you know, it's been good for this team so far and hopefully he can keep it up. Now, what else should we be talking about in Caps world? I got two little bits of news. One is that congratulations are in order for Coach Laviolette as he is now the winningest coach in USA hockey. So that is for American-born coaches. He now has the most wins passing Tortorella, I want to say. Um, so that's always fun. And then Caps also made a move. They picked up defenseman Dennis Chalowski. They picked him up from Seattle via waivers, which I was actually surprised by considering we have no freaking cap space. Right, how did they do that? <laughs> uh, well, they can make some moves right now because Backstrom's on long-term injury reserves. They actually have like a ton of money to play with. They have like $9 million and change to play with right now because he's out injured. Um, he also doesn't cost a lot, 900000 In order to make up that space, they sent down uh, Beck Mallinston. So he is down in the back with Hershey, hopefully playing well and ready to come back up when they need him. But, uh, you know, they brought him in, and he played with Mantha and Jensen in Detroit. Uh, they both seem to have a lot of high praise for him. Puck moving defenseman. He's got to work on his defensive game, which is kind of important if you're a defenseman. But, uh, you know, I was reading some things, and I agree with it, that it's a it's a low-risk, high-reward move. You know, this kid comes in, maybe he actually is really good, and now you or you can get him to a point where he's really good, and then he becomes, you know, a solid contributor for you, be it on the, you know, probably second or third pairing. Uh, but it's someone that actually works out. He's only 23, and he's not very expensive. He's scheduled to be a restricted free agent in the offseason. So if you decide after the season you only want to hang on to him, you can just let him go and not offer him a, a, a tender him a contract. Or you realize, whoops, our bad. Probably shouldn't have done that. And you put him on waivers with the intention of he either goes to Hershey or someone else picks him up. So there's no real risk involved here. And it gives you some decent depth on defense that you didn't necessarily need, but it can't hurt. So... If he was like 29, 28, 29, 30, and it was a, you know, I'm a little bit more irritated at this move. But a 23 year old defenseman, left sided. So now they have, you know, a bunch of guys that can play on the left. I'm fine with it. Do you think he gets any playing time before Backstrom comes back? Uh, Yeah. No. Oh, hmm. I don't know. Because I don't really know when Backstrom's going to come back. So it's kind of hard to answer that one. You know, I don't know if they really know at this point. It sounds like he's just starting to get into his rehab process. So. Yeah. I think it's great to have the depth. I think I want to see this season La Violette give the def- the defenders a break every now and then so they can rest their bodies, um, especially because the season is a little bit more condensed because of the Olympics in terms of games close together. Although the Caps haven't had that so far, which is weird. And it was a later start. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't mind getting to see him for a couple of games. Uh, Matt Irwin, I don't really care if he plays or not. You know, 33-year-old defenseman. I'd rather see the younger guy and see what he's got. Um, so that that's what I would do. I, I'd like to see. I would like to see him play. I don't know if we see him before Backstrom comes back, but I definitely want to see him get some game time. And Backstrom's he, he's on long term injury reserve, so the earliest he can come back is what mid November. Mid November. Uh, I think it was November? early November, if I remember correctly, because I don't remember if the long term injury reserve was retroactive. I want to say it was early. No- I want to say November tenth, but I think that's wrong. I think that's the date I had in my mind. So yeah, maybe that's. I, I think that's right. All right. So yeah, let's 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 go with that. That makes us sound smart. <laughs> yeah, they've got they've got more than a few games that they could test this guy out in while Backstrom's out. Backstrom, man, he's the nine million dollar man. He's he's got he's holding all the chips right now. You know, uh, depending on what he does, depends. It's gonna have affect uh, a lot of other players around him. So. We'll see what happens, but right now I could not be happier with the way the Caps started this season. It's great to have Caps hockey back on TV, uh, and and they they come out guns a blazing. That's what you want to see. And and best part is it looks like they're having fun out there. You know the the pandemic season and even in that uh, the series against the Bruins, they didn't look like they were having a good time. And now it feels as if those guys really are enjoying themselves on the ice again. So happy hockey players means they're usually 
doing pretty well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's the idea. All right, so is that it for Caps World? Uh, that's what I got in my notes. All right, well, that's it for what's going on in Caps World. Now let's go down on the farm. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going down on the farm. We are talking Hershey Bears and South Carolina Stingrays. Coach Dan, what's going on down on the farm? Well, let's start in Hershey, where the Bears started their season this past weekend with two games, both of those being wins over Charlotte and Lehigh Valley. So they're off to a good start. They'll be back at it with back-to-back games in Charlotte over this upcoming weekend. Let's head on down to South Carolina, where the Stingrays opening night is scheduled for this upcoming Saturday, the 23rd. That's what's going on down on the farm. That's it? That's it. Wow. Is there something else? No, I think so. They haven't really played a lot of games yet, man. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, hey, go Bears, go Stingrays. Now let's go around the NHL. All right, everybody, here we go. The NHL, they have started the regular season. There's hockey on TV again. Everything is right in the world. That's a lie. No, it's not. It's kind of screwed up. But there's still hockey on TV, yeah, which there's makes... There's still a pandemic. Yeah, there's still hockey on TV making life a little bit better. But there's a lot of bad people in the NHL, and we're going to hear all about the... That's pe- not nice. We're going to hear all about the rule breakers of what they're that- doing. That's true. So, everybody, what's going on? Coach Dan, tell us. What's going on around the NHL? All right. Before we get into those that are being bad bad boys. Naughty. Uh, let's start with some people who are getting paid. First, we'll start in Boston where they signed Charlie McAvoy to an eight-year, $76 million deal. Montreal wow. signed Nick Suzuki to an eight-year, $63 million. Everybody's just throwing money around. Nashville signed Matias Ekholm to a four-year, $25 million deal. I've always liked his name. Matias Ekholm. I just wish he could play for the Caps. I like his name. I like it. Ottawa signed Brady Kachuk to a seven-year deal worth a reported total of $57.5 million. And the Islanders signed Ryan Pulak to an eight-year deal worth a reported total of just under $50 million. Now, these guys are getting paid. These guys are giving up some money. As Dallas's Roddick Fosca was fined $5,000 for slashing Ottawa's Tim Stoltz. Calgary's Rasmus Anderson was fined $5,000 for roughing Edmonton's Kaylor Yamamoto. Florida's Joe Thornton was fined $1,875 for slashing Tampa's Boris Kachok. And as low, they were just fine. These guys were suspended. These are the baddest of the bad boys. Colorado's Gabriel Landeskog was suspended for two games for boarding Chicago's Kirby Doc. I think it's Dotch. I said Doc, and then my voice disappeared for a second. <laughs> Detroit's Dylan Larkin was suspended one game for roughing Tampa's Matthew Joseph. St. Louis's Pavel Buchnevich was suspended. He f- it sounds like he would be like in a gangster movie. Like a Bond villain. Like Buchnevich, that yeah. sounds like he'd be like gangster. Yeah. Anyways, he got suspended two games for headbutting of all things. Arizona's Lawson Kraus. And those weren't the only suspensions. Let's wrap it up with the biggest suspension that we had. As San Jose's Evander Kane was suspended 21 games for violating, and I quote, an established violation of and lack of compliance with the NHL and NHL Players Association COVID-19 protocol. Now, the story is, is that he presented a fake vaccination card Brandon mm. if I remember correctly the whole point of these vaccinations and wearing masks and all of this stuff that we are doing is to protect other people's I wear my mask to keep you safe and you wear your mask to keep me safe now we don't do this when we're recording because we're in our own homes yeah this thing affects you whether you're healthy or not right right and so I got vaccinated so that I could do my part to help end this pandemic by making sure we get enough people vaccinated so we can go back to some sense of normalcy. I can understand if people are hesitant to get the vaccine. It hasn't been around that long. There's still potentially side effects that may pop up that we didn't know about because they take a certain amount of time before they kick in and whatever the case may be. So I understand people's hesitation. Evander Kane, if you are concerned because we don't have enough data at this point about the vaccine, 
and you don't want to get vaccinated, okay. Put your mask on when you're around anybody else so you can keep other people safe just in case. But to present a fake vaccination, if this is the case, it may not be, but it sounds like this is the case. But if you're presenting a fake vaccination card, what is wrong with you? I can't say all the words I'm thinking because I like to keep this a family-friendly show. Although I think between the two of us, I've definitely cursed more on this show than you have. Right, right. Yep. In the history. Yeah, that's fair. In the history. Of, and I'm the one that works with kids. <laughs> that's why. You're holding I'm, it in all day. I'm good at not doing it around them. I get if someone's concerned. But to prevent a, fac- a fake vaccination card. Like, I'm sure you've earned enough money in your career, buddy. That if this is about what well, you still want to get paid and play. Uh-uh. You get no sympathy. And the fact it's only 21 games... Is I feel like is not enough. He's been endangering other people this entire to potentially endangering other people this entire time. Evander Kane is a moron, and he deserves a harsher punishment than he's getting, and harsher words than I'm using right now. Here's the thing: uh, this isn't his first brush with the with the NHL and being in trouble, uh, but this is like a, a whole new level of trouble for Evander Kane, and. What what are, are are you are you are you eighteen are you nineteen are you trying to buy no, beer? No, they're smart enough not to do it. Oh you, oh, I see where you're going. I interrupted your funny point. Yeah, are, are you trying to buy beer, Evander Kane? Honestly, you're, you're you're using a fake vaccine card, and yeah, I know they're they're probably easy to fake. They're paper and pen, not the greatest system that they have in place. I'll I'll agree with that. That's that's very true. <laughs> yeah, like okay, you have a Xerox machine. You can still go to Kinkos. Are there still Kinkos? I would I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Yeah, but you present that to the the NHL? Really? And you think you're going to get away with it? Really? Hon- I, and I don't... Uh, I think he did for a little while. That's kind of the scary part. That Yes, I will agree with that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Uh, it, it, was he Nick Papa Giorgio from Vegas Vacation? Is that what his uh, card said? Does he... D- d- he no bifocals today, sir? No, I do not require them. Uh, that was a callback. Yeah, or not call. That was that was re- you you you're digging deep in pop culture for that one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Christmas vacation is my favorite, but Vegas is my second favorite. But uh, yeah. What do you what do you do in Evander Kane? Like, do you really think you're that untouchable? And if you do think you're that untouchable, why are you worried about getting the vaccine then? Because apparently your Superman can get away with anything. You know what? Um, kick him out of the league. And I don't, I don't like saying that about people a lot of the time because this is their livelihood. They do have families to take care of and all that kind of stuff. And there's other leagues you can play in around the world. Go play in the KHL. You know, go get the Sputnik uh, vaccine if you're so worried. You can watch them on ESPN Plus. That's right. You can do that. So Evander Kane, you suck. I just, I, I don't get it. It's not, like you said, it's not the first time he's gotten in trouble with the NHL. And every time he gets in trouble, it seems like it, not just suspensions for hitting someone. I can't remember if he got them. I mean, probably because, like, everybody's been suspended, it sounds like, at this point in the league at some for some one thing or another. But this is just, like, you're, you're potentially endangering your teammates. You're potentially endangering their family members, their kids. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I don't know. I got nothing else on this one. He sucks. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. So... Yeah. Finally, <laughs> now that we got that part, we're talking about ESPN Plus. They got a whole lot of hockey for you to watch as they now have over 1,000. That's one with three zeros, Brandon. That's pretty good. That's a lot of zeros. Yeah. It's the amount that you'll get fined times five for roughing somebody, apparently, or headbutting. Headbutting. Why would you headbutt somebody? Uh, that seems more like a... Uh, a oh, headbutting with suspension, not a fine. A not soccer soccer move is to, head, to headbutt somebody. <laughs> Only if you're Zinedine Zidane. <laughs> Anyways, the ESPN has over 1,000 NHL games. They've got the KHL. They've got the Premier Hockey Federation. And they have the NCAA men's and women's games. There is a whole lot of hockey to get with ESPN+. Plus. ESPN is trying to get like all of the sports right now. And I know, like, they don't think of hockey as much as, you know, as high as they might some other ones. But the fact is, it's easy to access the games. It's on your phone. It's on your computer. It's on your Fire Stick. It's on your, is it on Roku? I don't know. Do you have one of those, Brandon? I have a Roku, yes. Yeah. Okay. You. I don't know if you ha- if it's on there, whatever the case may be. Like, I love having it. I don't necessarily like paying for it. But I sure. like having it. 
So it's great. You get to watch a lot of games. So you see, yeah. I was I was looking up That's on my news Roku. For the past uh, week. Uh, I was looking up on my Roku ESPN Plus, and because I figured that's what the app was called. No, the app is ESPN, and ESPN Plus is in that app, which is very confusing. Yeah, that part's a little confusing. Yeah, that that is definitely a little bit. But it's pretty cool that so they yeah, have that, uh... a thousand hours of NHL. They have uh, the KHL. They have uh, the Women's Hockey League and the NCAA. That's kind of wild. That's so much hockey, and I, I have to assume like the the Frozen Fen or the Frozen Four and the Bean Pot and those type of uh, events will also be on there as well. And uh, if you're a hockey fan, I mean, ESPN Plus is the way to go. And plus, they have the UFC and and all other kinds of of stuff over there. So that's that's very intriguing uh, stuff. But if if you like any kind of hockey. You've got an option to watch it now. I mean, it's true. It's. I, mm-hmm. I wish it was a little easier, and maybe I'm doing this wrong, but I kind of wish that their app was a little easier in terms of like selecting what sports you want, right? So if I go on there, I want to be able to click soccer and have all the live games, click hockey and have all the live games. Can Can you pick teams? Do you know? Like, can you say like I only want to be told when like the Caps or the Boston University Terriers or whoever are playing dynamo know. moscow i know i can favorite teams and if i go and like the scores theirs will like be along the top right but i don't know if that works for espn plus per se i haven't played with it too too much right um but i i can't seem to see a way where you can just watch those games or mm. have those be popped up and you know it looks like at the bottom there's a thing but i'm clicking on it and i don't know if it's really working the way i want it to but whatever we'll figure it out later all right so coach stan is that the show yeah i think that's the show this week let's wrap it up man all right well if you want to continue the conversation with coach stan or i you can it's real easy all you have to do is tweet to either one of us you can tweet to me at brando cash coach dan where can people tweet to you at you can find me on twitter at wtp coach dan talking all kinds of capitals related stuff when my kid's not driving me crazy when i'm trying to watch a game you can also find me on there talking about Arsenal Football Club and what is wrong with this team? Well, I have an answer. It would be unfortunate if that's the case. Uh, also on there talking about the Bills. Fell asleep at the end of the third quarter on Monday. But you know what? I'm happy that they tried to go for the win. I'll take it. Also, occasionally talking about Washington football team and how they completely botched the Sean Taylor thing. And that is incredibly disappointing considering uh, what he meant to that franchise and just the kind of person he was becoming. And then uh, on their occasion, we'll talk about other sports as things may come up. And that's finding me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan. But if you've enjoyed the show, go ahead and check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash whatthepuckpod. It's where you can find out when new shows are coming up, as well as all sorts of other things related to the Washington Capitals, Hershey Bears, South Carolina Stingrays, the National Hockey League, American Hockey League, the ECHL, and other fun things that pop into Brandon's head. But that is... Facebook.com slash what the pot Brandon. I was talking about Monday night football, how the bills are one of the best teams in the national football league. But if there's a team that's not quite as good as them based out of Baltimore, that you may want to talk about on a podcast. Is there uh, is there something people should listen to? Oh, you mean that team that is number one in the AFC, that team uh, number the- one on top of the mountain at five and one. Yeah. Those Baltimore Ravens. Seven yeah, nine. those that's that's my team right there, and you can listen to my Baltimore Ravens podcast called The Call. It's where we talk all things Baltimore Ravens. Me and my buddy Josh are getting ready for the Cincinnati Bengals to come to Baltimore this Sunday, uh, but number one in the AFC at the current moment, so that's really cool. Now, we do this show for free. You listen, stream, and download for free on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook and YouTube. All we ask in return is for you to please spread the word about the show. Write us an Apple podcast review and then let people know on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and Twitch and TikTok. And you wear your social on the web or with your phone. Say, I'm a Washington Capitals fan. I listen to What the Puck and you should too. I do have to shout out. I don't know the username right now but i saw on the caps subreddit that somebody was asking about podcasts they should listen to and somebody was very nice enough to suggest ours so uh, i really do appreciate 
Yeah, I really do appreciate uh, that listener for suggesting What the Puck, saying that we are a Caps-centric podcast that this person should check out. So we really do appreciate that. It. It, I, it, it, I get, I mean, I, I used to always talk about the podcast on Reddit, and then, like, the Ravens subreddit moderator kicked me off because they're like, all you do is talk about your podcast. Then I found out it was a rival podcast, which is stupid to even say rival podcast because it's not like we're broadcasting at the same time. They can Sorry, listen to your show and my room show. There's only for one podcast in the whole world. Yeah, and that's how I got blocked by I hate JJ Reddick, but whatever. Um, but I'm not bitter, I'm still around. <laughs> I'm I'm still around. They're not. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, check out Reddit. Uh, and thank you for, for sharing our show on Reddit. That That's really awesome of you. Now, let's go over the games until we talk again. Cap said it was really funny. They're handing out the, the shield and the, the hatchet. And they're like, all right, boys, let's go hit the road. And I go look at the schedule. They're only going to Jersey. And then they're back in town on Saturday. So hit the road for like what? A, a really quick uh, plane ride up to Jersey, to, up to Newark and back. Okay, fine. Get yourself hyped up however you want. But the Caps will be in Newark up against the New Jersey Devils. Our buddy Ming Chen, who's been on the show before, that's his team, the New Jersey Devils. That game is at 7 o'clock on Thursday the 21st. Uh, at And it, you can watch that on NBC Sports Washington. And then on Saturday, the Caps play an afternoon game at home in D.C., up against the Calgary Flames. You can watch that one on the NHL Network or on NBC Sports Washington locally. And then the Caps play again Monday night up in Ottawa, up in Canada, going across the border for the first time in, what, 18 months? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. They're up against the Senators. That game is at 7 o'clock. You can watch that one on NBC Sports Washington+. Plus. And then we'll be back. We'll cover three games again, and we'll be back recording on the 26th. So keep your eyes and ears uh, peeled to your favorite podcast app or on Facebook or on Twitter, and we will let you know when the show is posted again. So that is pretty much it for the show this week. Everybody, say it loud, say it proud. Let's go, Caps! This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by DJ Wolfman. Voiceover by Sarah Jacks. For more information, go to brandocash.com.